Now let's talk about uh, food security. Can run away from that, can we? And uh, it was one of the issues raised there, how developing the telecom center can, uh, a sector can actually uh, reduce harvest loss, you know, kind of bring in the food from the farm to the gate. Now let's look at another issue, which is that the federal government, if we remember, has uh, put in place a 150 import-free duty season for importation of grains, mostly wheat, must rice, cowpeas and all of that how can we expect this to affect the food security space we know that customs is not very happy about this they say that the country will lose about 188 billion naira because of the duty suspension for that period of 150 days uh, but of course there are other areas uh, domestic producers are also not so happy they say this is uh, another kind of competition to them but I guess the federal government is focused on food security at this time. Let's discuss some of the impact and how we can make maximize this period. Now, we'll do this uh, with Ifi Umuna. She's the head of strategy at Apex. Apex, we know, is a commodity uh, index board. And so they deal a whole lot with commodities. Hi, Ifi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, good to have you. So tell me, what side are you on when we look at this uh, import? duty or tariff-free period for importation of food we've heard the, we've heard the pros and the cons uh some like like the customs are counting the costs you know that they will have to forego for this period domestic uh producers are thinking about the competition but obviously the government is just looking at let's feed the people at this time to reduce the hunger in the land where is the effects in this um, I think for us, we know that it's important. We need it. People are hungry. There's not enough food within our borders, so we have to import. And when you look at the tent or the window, it's 150 days. So within that time, there is enough time to ensure that those who are locally producing store adequately store their produce to ensure it doesn't waste. Um, as it relates to ensuring that food is available, it's affordable prices of our commodities or produce will reduce, which is what we all want to see. So when it comes to this government intervention to ensure that we are allowing imports for just 150 days, we are in favor of this, definitely. Yeah, but what about the spillover? And a lot of people have also warned, especially economists, have warned that this is so short, it's a very short term uh, uh, thing, uh, measure. What are we doing? What are we using the 150 days to do that could, you know, help and uh, boost supply at the end of the 150 days? So essentially the 150 days is meant to cover the time between present and harvest, where we will see our local producers um, ensure that they have uh, harvested their crops and there's more food in the market. During this time as well, both private and public, or private and public sector are working towards ensuring that we improve our uh, food commodity access and uh, affordability throughout the country. So you see that states such as Niger or, or Lagos states are working on ensuring food production or food accessibility. Um, private sector organizations such as Apex are ensuring that we're able to um, access or spur the capital markets and spur uh, the access to financing for farmers, whether that's directly through cash or through inputs, so they're able to uh, grow or produce more across uh, various areas in Nigeria. So there are interventions ongoing both for the short term and the long term from private and public and then partnerships collectively to ensure that we uh, hopefully do not find ourselves in the same situation next year and thereafter. Yeah, but I mean, I hear you, but I don't think I see a lot of, especially when it comes to the issue of a storage, because as we speak now, we know that the price of some perishables like tomatoes and pepe have tapered because it's a harvest period. But then after the harvest period, prices surge again because there's no storage, no preservation for the period after harvest. How, many, how much work do you see going on in that space? So we know that typically 40 to 50 percent of food is lost to post harvest losses due to lack of storage. Um, and what we've seen is we need to ensure that from firstly, from a government perspective, we uh, replenish the strategic grain reserves and then ensure that there's a constant way of ensuring that 
those with all the commodities within that stay um, as should be, um, as well as getting private sector or different actors to engage in storage, training farmers and other uh, stakeholders within the value chain to engage in storage. But the a critical issue around storage is one infrastructure as well as financing. So this is where you need the private sector to come on board. And this would require uh, ease of doing business from a government perspective when it comes to regulations and bureaucracy to make sure that they're able to uh, invest in storage. And it is seen as something more than just, you know, development projects. It's an actual uh, financially viable for private sector actors as well. So when you say development projects uh, and the coming together of the public and the private sector, how, um, you know, could you give an example? Do you have people, investors, maybe building warehouses, buying equipment, or, or how do you see that happening? So for instance, at Apex, we have over 200 warehouses across, or 280 warehouses across Nigeria, uh, where we store commodities, both uh, engaging with, again, private and public. Uh, we are engaging with both uh, governments from various states and on a federal level to try and um, push towards uh, more adequate and accessible storaging facilities for farmers. We provide storage facilities for the farmers that we work with, which are over 250,000 across the nation. So there are many examples uh, where storage is uh, a key topic or key aspect for um those in the, the agriculture and food sector but it does need to increase we do have inadequate storage facilities um in nigeria it's not enough for what we are producing or what we hope to produce and what we hope to store so that uh we are not uh or we get to the point of food security and i think the key point is uh storage and infrastructure yeah so where are these storage facilities are they closer to the farm or closer to the gate and then accessibility of it to the farmers. So we we ensure that we have our warehouses closely to or closely um, close in distance to uh, the farmers that we work with, or farmer communities or um, uh, collectives that we work with, from Kaduna to Katsina, um, Niger State, Lagos State. The list goes on. But we ensure that there is accessibility to of or for the farmers to our warehouses where they're able to um, access these goods because we also work with uh, various other actors. We have a range of logistic uh, processes that we can use to ensure that food moves. This is not to say that it is not difficult. Uh, we are still in Nigeria and we have some fundamental challenges in the process, but we uh, aim to ensure that we're able to do so. Yeah, so what about maintenance of those uh, storage facilities? Uh, for instance, you do need power, electricity, you know, to preserve some of those. How's that going with AFEX? Um, naturally, the, the cost of, of running such warehouses is high. Uh, this is why it is a difficult uh, endeavor for many to embark on. But um, it, Naturally, as we always say, it would be much easier if we had stable light, if we had affordable um, or we had uh, security where one wouldn't have to look into private actors uh, to provide that form of security across the country. So same as infrastructure when it comes to road networks, uh, we need to ensure that we have stable light, that we um, are we have security, that or there's a lack or there's better security across uh, the states and the country as a well. whole. What about transporting from the storage facilities to the market? Um, we've heard a lot of transporters, logistics uh, stakeholders talk about checkpoints on the road. You've already talked about the issue in, of insecurity, non-state actors also um, giving them another level of challenge in the process, in the value chain. So Security, again, becomes an issue when it comes to transportation, because at, at the point in which we say, even if we do go ahead to ensure our road networks are, are, are fixed, um, the aspects of security will still pose a, a challenge. So that's one that needs to be uh, quickly rectified in order to ensure that we can move commodities or food from point A to point B without uh, various challenges. As you said, uh, there, you know, checkpoints, you, you find yourself in, in 
positions where corruption is rife, unfortunately. Um, and when it comes to security or in securing our own goods, we ensure that we we have, unfortunately, uh, have to use private security to ensure that you know goods go from point A to point B, given our current scenario. So this is where, um, or this is why, we and a range of other actors continuously ask to ensure that we tackle insecurity across Nigeria um, and fix our road networks so that it is easier to to move goods. Uh, from point A to point B. So if you could influence the decision and action of the Minister of Agriculture or the Ministry itself, what do you think at this time should be giving priority and maybe a target period also that you think can make an impact on our drive towards food security in Nigeria? Um, I think there's a short term and a long term approach. In the short term, we have to ensure that we provide uh, emergency aid and relief to uh, Nigerians across the nation, whether that's through, you know, uh, import waivers, which is currently ongoing, or providing some form of, of transfer of cash or aid where uh, food is subsidized and people can access food. But in the long term, we have to look into how we got into this uh, situation uh, through, you know, strategic reserves being uh, diminished, we need to see that that is not a continuous or systemic um, ongoing challenge. We have to ensure that they are uh, replenished, that there is a plan long term um, to see farmers produce adequate amounts with you know, improved seeds so that they're, uh, they're protected against uh, climate change issues um and they are you know using advanced or at least modern agricultural technologies to do so we need to work with uh both the private sector when it comes to um, capitalizing finance to ensure that agriculture is a viable and um robust sector where government is is simply a pillar of support rather than spurring it but at the moment they would need to uh, ensure that they are uh, leading the charge in terms of um, helping us out of this uh, dilemma that we're in. All right, Ify, thank you so much for that. Uh, we do hope that uh, the minister is listening and implementation, well, at least could begin, especially in this period of, uh, you know, the duty-free period. But thank you so much if you went ahead of strategy with Apex for your time. Thank you.